Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to check in on these two worm bins that have red wigglers living in them to give them this delicious assortment of partially fermented cantaloupe melon. I can smell the alcohol brewing on this stuff already and there's a few, uh, oh my goodness, I've got one of these um, plastic containers over here that was left a little bit too close to the stove one time and it's got a big hole on the side of it and it looks like I just dripped a little bit of this fluid that's collecting on the bottom of the container um, and I think that might be the part of the reason I'm observing a few little flying insects buzzing around here they probably caught a whiff of this delicious assortment of stuff very fragrant and when I looked down into these systems I could see a couple flying insects buzzing around over there I saw what appeared to be two mating insects much larger looking almost like a single object but I'm fairly sure it's two of them here's a flying one Looks like we've even got ourselves a little spider that has moved in over here to try to hunt some of these flying insects. So I shooed him away just because I want to remove this plastic covering without um, disturbing him too bad. It seemed like if we just let him leave on his own accord, that might be the better bet. So these systems have been around for 72 days and 11 days have passed since the last time we checked in here to give them feeding number six. And feeding number six was a, a feeding of just a few, um, a few slices of bread. And I think we added some leafy matter to go alongside the food. And then as you can see right here, we put a, a top covering of leafy matter as well. Once again, I'm seeing some movement down here. What appears to be mating, flying insects attached to one another. So I've got my um, concoction of mosquito dunks solution here and I figured I would just go ahead before I forget and treat both of these systems with a, a little shot of this stuff if it was just flying insects that I saw buzzing around over here I would assume that maybe they came over in pursuit of the smell of the foods that we're gonna feed but the fact that I'm seeing what appears to me to be mating insects attached to each other, which I'm assuming are unable to fly while that's happening, since they're kind of connected to each other. I do assume that we might have a few wise guy flying insects attempting to make themselves at home in here. So I figured perhaps even before we get to disturbing the material here in the container, we would give the um, system a shot. And then maybe we'll throw in another dose at the end just for good measure. So the um, the last feeding was applied down the middle. Like I said, a few slices of bread combined with some, some leafy matter. And uh, I wondered what they would make of that food. After 11 days, I didn't know if we would find leftovers. I kind of breezed through the video from last time, so I couldn't even remember if I did what I normally do when I put bread into worm bins, which is to thoroughly moisten the bread to make sure it gets a good um, chance at being approached and consumed by worms rather than just sitting there and um, getting covered in mold and not going anywhere. So I'm definitely seeing a good many worms down here in the feeding zone and so far I've not really seen any signs of those two or three low um, slices of bread that were put in here. So it does seem like the the bread was a pretty popular feeding last time. I usually don't feed too much bread. Most of the bread in this house gets consumed before it has a chance to spoil. So um, so I'm I'm not that not that familiar with using bread in my worm bins as food but with the little bit of experience that I do have feeding bread once in a while um, I have found that dampening the stuff thoroughly does seem to help and perhaps we did do that in here when we put that food in here and it is good to see that they're pretty much done with the last feeding and that they're ready for more Usually I don't even worry too much if I do find leftovers of the previous feeding in my worm bins. I usually just press on and feed anyhow. But in this case, it does seem like they've done a pretty good job doing away with their 
last feeding. In a way, I also considered the leaves that we laid down as the foundation for the feeding as additional food, because I'm sure the worms see it that way too. Most people would probably consider leafy matter in their worm bins as mainly bedding, or at least as bedding in the beginning. But everything in the worm bin eventually starts to break down and turns into worm food. And our excavation of the feeding zones really didn't show many signs of leafy matter down there. So it does seem to me like they went ahead and feasted on the bread and also appear to have consumed a good amount of the leafy matter we threw in there as well. So, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I figured I'd get my box here of leaves and use a foundation of bread um, use a foundation of leaves once again down in the feeding zone since the worms seem to be responding well to it and kind of the way we found this um, system or these systems when we first arrived with a good amount of leafy matter spread out on the top too I figured once we uh, once we've had a chance to stir in all the leafy matter that was left out on top as sort of a top dressing then we would be able to come back in with more and put even more in there so uh, here and there you could see mold growing on some of this cantaloupe so uh, it's not too surprising I'm catching a whiff of what appears to be alcohol I think I think that's what I'm smelling I know a few people that brew brandy of various types so I've been around um, their setups when there was uh, fruit fermenting and that's kind of where I'm uh, getting that correlation that that's that sense of familiar smell coming off of this stuff and Hopefully it's something that the worms enjoy. So the stuff that I just sprinkled in was pulverized eggshell, which is a great thing to include with your worm bin feedings to give the worms the grit that they need to break down the foods that they're eating. So it's usually at this point that we utilize the need to backfill the feeding zone as an excuse to go rummage around the outer edges of the bin to bring in material to cover up the feeding zone and by doing it this way, the entire system gets a nice bit of aeration and tilling. And, and it also gives us an opportunity to blend in a lot of that leafy matter that was shoved aside to give us access to the feeding zone. And I think it does really make the material in the bin really nice for the worms to be able to live in because it's not just a whole bunch of worm castings piling up. It's It's got all kinds of bedding material blended into it all over the place. And like I mentioned earlier, the bedding is not just bedding, it's also food. So that pretty much gives them stuff to nibble on no matter where in the bin they are, whether they're going after the freshly added plentiful, fruity, delicious foods that they were given here, the banana and the cantaloupe, or if they're just hanging out a little bit further from the middle even there they're going to bump into all kinds of stuff that they can consume and, and as far as the moisture level goes in here I believe it also helps to be blending in that sort of semi dry leafy material because it probably helps absorb some of what appears to be excess moisture in here I'm not sure if it's fair to say that it's excess moisture. In these younger bins, I do want to keep things a little bit more moist so that the worms can really dig in and feel comfortable no matter where in the bin they find themselves. And then eventually, when I start to get the sense that maybe the stuff is getting a little bit muddy or a little bit sticky and gooey, sometimes at that point I'll try to take measures to help the system start uh, being able to breathe and kick off some of what might be excess moisture and permit some evaporation to occur but with those plastic coverings that we've been using the the system does have a pretty good chance to hang on to the majority of its 
moisture content and uh, I think that's a good thing for systems like these that are still under a hundred days of age so the uh, the last thing I wanted to include here on top was yet another generous helping of leafy matter as a top dressing and this what I just put in here might be a little bit more than I usually use but I think that's a-okay you know it also seems to work almost as like a the way mulch works in your garden it you know definitely helps to keep the moisture level of what's below it at the nice damp consistency whether it's your plants that are hanging on to their moisture content with mulch or if it's the worms down in your worm bin having the moisture content that they need to be happy and healthy it does seem like a top covering of stuff like the, these leaves is um is a beneficial thing and I almost wonder if I should have put the, the follow-on application of mosquito dunks in before putting in the dry material but I think with the plastic coverings it's going to help the help the stuff stay down within the system rather than just vanishing to like a flash evaporation so I'm going to uh, just put a little dose of this stuff in here gotta remember we put a pretty good amount of it in the beginning which got blended in and now we're also doing a, an additional follow-up application of it here on top and after we cover everything with plastic the majority of this stuff will probably stay put and not be lost to evaporation so looks like we managed to use the leafy matter successfully and scraping some of the stuff that was adhering to my gloves and returning it to the bins so that means I'm not just sending the stuff down the drain and wasting it and okay and then the only other thing that remains here is to get these coverings back in place so I think that's it for our check-in now with the 72 day old worm systems they're doing nicely and other than getting things put away and cleaned up I think we're done and those are the sort of things I'm not going to keep you around for because they're boring so before I go really quick let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now